All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today. I'm letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. We hope that you enjoy. Enjoy. enjoy, enjoy. Welcome to episode 388 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill. Today we've got Daniel Weeze back Hello. in the north. And yeah. Ken, 69 Blizzard. Hello. And old Blue Sniffer from the Great White Dwarf, <laughs> Marcus <Blue> Almighty. <laughs> Greetings. Sorry, I had to clear my nose there. A bit. Yeah. <laughs> so We're all Blue Sniffers on this. You, you know, I, I, that's a really good Ramones song. Not all I want to do, now I want to sniff some glue. Yeah. Well, there you go. Carbona, not glue. All right. So it's the holiday season. Winter solstice was yesterday, and that's my favorite day yes. of the year. Not because it is dancing naked around a fireplace in the snow, um, oh, because it's the that's shortest. That's tradition. It's the shortest day of the year, and I love darkness, and mm. I like winter, and it's my favorite mm. season. And nice. of course, it was Peter Chris's birthday the day before. Yeah. Um, I'm a I'm a December baby too, so it's a it's oh, a good time. So happy we birthday! Don't, we don't really have much of a agenda today. You know, we we did try to decide which Kissiantic entity threads to discuss this week, but the first one that really came to mind was uh, a thread that starts off with "Kiss doesn't make masterpiece studio albums." And that raises a good question for everyone to consider. Has KISS recorded an album that you would consider a, ma a masterpiece? And how would you define masterpiece? So, Mark. Yes. Um, well, I, I guess it depends on two things. What do you dis what do you signify as a masterpiece? Are we talking about like sound quality or are we just talking about songwriting in general? Now, if we're talking about, you know, songwriting in general, then we have a, you know, a bigger array of albums to probably choose from. If we're talking about Sonics specifically, then we are narrowing it down to quite a f small bunch because Kiss has never been known to be an audiophile type band. No, certainly they never had, you know, engineers that went be above and beyond, you know, to get the top sounding amps and this and that for them. Maybe... And I'll say this to show you that I'm impartial here. I'll even say that Bob Ezrin probably did that with Destroyer. I think he probably tried to step it up a, a notch to make it sound more audiophile-ish compared to their prior records. But I still think it sucks. But in any case, uh, the as far as I'm concerned, a, a, a big classic record for me would be the Rock and Roll Over. I think that that record has always been the one that I thought combined their songwriting skills and and I think Kramer gave them the sound that the KISS fans were hoping they would return to after Destroyer. They wanted that raw sound. They wanted something that, you know, would complement the sort of, you know, kind of lyrical content that they were used to doing at that point. You know, a lot of the songs about chicks and partying and this and that. So, you know, it, it makes more sense to have a sound like that than it makes to have a sound like Destroyer had, in my opinion, of course, right? But I, I, I think that the that the, that's the one of them right there. To me, I think a classic, if you're talking about strictly songwriting, we're talking rock and roll over. If you're talking about something that's sonically a classic, then I would say Revenge, and I can't believe I'm going to say this Destroyer. Right, but do, do you equate classic with Masterpiece? Uh... Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I guess you could, because uh, what really makes a masterpiece? I mean, is it, like I said, is it just how it sounds that makes it a masterpiece, or is it the, the skill of the songwriting that makes it the masterpiece? I think, to me, the masterpiece is rock and roll over. Anytime anybody asks me what my favorite record is or what I would recommend, I mean, it's so strong and high on my list. To me, I kind of almost view it as the masterpiece of their catalog. Right. So I was only asking that because, say, take Masterpiece Theater, which I'm sure mm. many will remember from mm. the yes. past. You wouldn't tune into Masterpiece Theater and say, uh, tonight's episode will be Blackadder or The Young Ones or, you mm. know, 
uh, fa- all in the family. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> you know, but yet art is subjective. So a masterpiece to one person may be a Van Gogh. So people could say audit like uh, the elder is is a is a masterpiece because you know the way they approached it you know they it's a constructual thing where they kind of envision a sort of story behind it you know maybe in that sense somebody could say that that could have been their masterpiece it was something that they only did once no other record in their catalog sounds like that so maybe that could be viewed as a masterpiece you know from those from that way of looking at it right. Well, let's go around the table. Daniel, for you, how, how would you define Masterpiece and has Kiss ever recorded one for you? Yeah, um, if someone says The Elder is a Masterpiece, <laughs> they must be surely insane, I'd say. But it's all in the eye of the beholder and so on. It's subjective, but The Elder is just a crazy record. But I do see how some people can like it. But to me, I'd say if you if you talk studio albums, uh, Rock and Roll Over, as Mark said, is surely one of the best ones. Um, but you have to take into account the live albums because that's such a big part of what Kiss is. You know, Kiss is a live band. Uh, when you talk to the the man in the street, you know, a random guy, he knows the show. He knows that Kiss is a good live act. He might not even know more than the two, three songs, but he knows that Kiss is the best live act around. So, so uh, you have to mention a live one, you know, the first one. Uh, Alive was the only record during Kiss's career that managed to you know, capture uh, the feel of Kiss, the live feel, the raw, the the brutal Kiss, the the, the you know. The dangerous kiss, mm-hmm. and uh, even though I might I might feel that there are stronger songs later on, you know, if I could nitpick, uh, I'd pick like songs from I have a few from Animalize, maybe one or two from um, Creatures of the Night, and and songs that I feel are better than the songs on Alive. But as a whole, Alive works better than any other. Kiss record in my mind, and I know you and the Times have felt that the lie isn't the best Kiss record. Record, but to me, uh, it's like the uh, unison feeling, so to speak. The record works from start to finish, even though I prefer a, a re-sequenced and expanded versions that I've heard uh, later on, where they actually put the songs in the correct order. But the first time I heard Alive, it, it really didn't matter. I, I thought it was just such a, such a great sounding record. And you felt like you were there. I mean, first row, pumping your fist. <laughs> and I don't know if they ever managed to top that. Uh, actually, in, in my mind, uh, it's the best Kiss record to me of all time. So I would say that Alive, even though you said that we were talking about studio albums, I have to pick a lie because it's such a milestone for Kiss fans and for Kiss as a band and for for live records in general. So uh, I'd say Kiss Live is a real masterpiece. Rock and Roll Over isn't bad, but I, I'd i put Kiss Alive uh, at number well, one. Considering how much of it was done in the studio, you could probably still consider it a studio album. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Everything's up to uh, drums. That's a good point. Yeah. And even then, just a couple of fixes here and there on those. So studio, yeah, I've never, I've never said a word against the live, live by the feel. way. The, the, the thing is the live feel, you know, <clears throat> mm-hmm. I don't care what they do in the studio, but when I listen to a live, it feels like I'm at the concert. When I listen to a live three, I hear that they are playing great. And they're, 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 they're great songs there, but it doesn't feel like I'm at the concert. So, yeah. so they, so there's a difference. There. It's interesting though that they captured it there, and people always say that it's, it captures the live show perfectly, and that's always what they've wanted in their studio records is their live sound on yeah. record. They did it there, but why Eddie Kramer couldn't recreate that again is hilarious. Mm. It's like you you did it there, you did exactly what they yeah. wanted, and it was mainly done in the studio. Why couldn't you just repeated it? You know. Well, they did, uh, he did, he did capture it for Rock and Roll Over mm-hmm. because they basically yeah. recorded live in the round. 
at uh, Star yeah. Theater yeah. for that one, wasn't it? So uh, from from that methodology, when your foundation is your drums and your drums are live, just like on the Alive album, where that was the only, you know, essentially usable part of the performance because Gene and Paul and Ace are, well, two of them are running around and one of them is falling down. So, you, you know, when you take those factors into the performance and Peter's rock solid behind there, sometimes speeding up, sometimes slowing down, that's a great way to start because once you start rebuilding all those tracks in the studio on top of that, you've still got the basic essence of a live performance there. If Peter had been drumming live in the studio again, wouldn't have had any of the adrenaline wouldn't have had any of the following, you know, who, whomever yeah. he followed more as a drummer, you know, whether whether he's playing to drums, uh, sorry, playing to guitar or playing to bass or mm -hmm. playing to singer, you know, as yeah. the case may be. And that's what's lost in Alive 3 in particular, because it's sterile. It doesn't mm -hmm. have that emotion. It doesn't have that. Well, Eric Singer is more of a click track. You know, so yeah. it, it doesn't have the little ups and downs, eddies and flows. So, he's a, yeah, he's a hat metronome guy. Every time he plays, you'll always hear a hi hat going dip, 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 as he drums. Like, no matter what he's doing, he always has that hi hat going. You but know, the rest but of the players Peter. weren't like they'd been in 1975 yeah. either for Gene and Paul. And Bruce was from a different, uh, completely different school of playing anyway. So, yeah. no wonder. Yeah. It, imagine if Alive 3 did have the sonic values of Alive. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Ken. Ken, we haven't forgotten about you. You've been so patient. Thank I'm you. just listening to your opinions and everything. Uh, uh, I mean, I agree with a lot of them. Uh, so, yeah, a masterpiece, you know, again, it's, it's, sub it's subjective. Um, um, what is a masterpiece? I don't know. Uh, an album that's perfect. Uh, and we talk about recorded masterpiece i guess you know you could say alive uh, which you know daniel was saying um because that's kind of the best for at least their live albums that is the masterpiece from for a, you know two, live two live three live four and so on um that is the one um the the board you know the 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 mark um, the standard that was held standard against. yeah you know um, so, but you know, yeah, can we nitpick on things, you know, about something about it? Yeah, it's, it's going to happen. So, um, from, from the standpoint of a live, uh, a live music, that's kind of their masterpiece and everyone knows about it. Um, yes, it was partially re-recorded and that's fine. Um, but I do agree with, with Mark, um, on, on Rock and Roll Over. Uh, more about the sound of rock and roll over. I mean, there are some holes, maybe a little bit, slightly uh, of some of the music in it uh, on rock and roll over. Though I, you know, I still like it all, but you know, is it perfect? No, but the sound to me is is a perfect uh, on record sound studio on record. You know, even though they're recorded technically live, um, so. Uh, I think the, the the masterpiece part is is more about is, is not necessarily the recorded music is the whole art form of Kiss in general, them being able to you know the, the art of presenting themselves with the makeup, the costumes, the stage show, the fireworks, and the music all combined, that that whole thing that they made, now that is a masterpiece. The whole the whole thing. You know, mm. the makeup, everything, uh, and the music that backs it up. Yeah, the whole thing. It's it's a masterpiece from that standpoint to me, um, because you know it, it's it works and keeps selling, and that's why they keep they they've toured from the beginning all the way up till now, and then into next year. So um, I think that's it uh, as a musical masterpiece. Yeah, Destroyer. Uh, that's that's a Bob more of a Bob Ezrin type masterpiece. Uh, Bob Ezrin's done a few masterpieces, you know. I would say that's probably his Destroyer, Billion Dollar Babies. I would say would be another one, and you know, The Wall. Um, those those are kind of masterpieces. Though, is there holes in those? Maybe you know, it's all subjective. So anyway, I don't think there's really any 
true masterpiece, but it, it's close. And again, the whole Kiss package is kind of, that's the masterpiece for me. I just think uh, Ken uh, put, uh, said something important there. A true masterpiece. I don't know if I I know any record that hasn't got holes in it. Right. Abbey Road. Something. Which one? What? Abbey, Abbey Road. Road? <laughs> you can always go Beatles. That's so you can find. P yeah. Is that, is that cheating? You know? I don't oh, know. I love, uh, I love bit, Abbey it's, Road. It's a, it's a bit cheating. Um, Exile then, on again, Main that, Street. That's. Then? That's all. That's all subjective. Because I mean, to me, I one of the records I think that that's a classic to be beginning and end, and has no flaws is the first Black Sabbath album. I've always thought that there's nothing wrong with that record, from beginning and end. But you see, I mean, for maybe someone like Daniel, he might not like that record, right? So of course there's going to be flaws to it, right? Yeah. A Scandinavian who doesn't like dark <clears throat> music. I like dark music, but uh, <laughs> it's really hard to to find an album. From start to finish, that you like. I don't. I don't think I know. Moving any pictures is that perfect. Like. What is it? Yeah, Moving you know. pictures. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, when I think of a masterpiece musical album, the first one that pops into my mind from my life experience is uh, Tesla's Mechanical Resonance. Mm. That thing, That's a good album. pound for pound, song for song. You know, Appetite for Destruction. That's another one. Yeah. You know, That's my pretty era. close. Yeah, and and then Too Fast for Love. Um, just, but I'm not going to mm. use the word masterpiece with Motley Crue. That would just be too much for Nicky's <laughs> ego. Um, you know, how do I define oh, a masterpiece? I, 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 I start looking at it. It's something that an, raises an artist above their general performance level. So mm. in order to be a masterpiece, it has to be them really operating at a very high level. The Mona Lisa, Da Vinci. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's why Alive is the Kiss masterpiece, you know. That's what put put them, you know. In the in the in the public, uh, the public noticed them. And, right, but they weren't and, they weren't really batting above their normal average. They were yeah. just be being captured in yeah, a, a way that presented what yeah. they already had. Because if you listen yeah. to the first Kiss album, the songs are there, but there's something dynamic about the performance that's transformed when you yeah. listen to it on a live. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. but 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 it always uh, you know as I mentioned you know Kiss Live Three they had Eddie Kramer again. And he must have forgotten how what, what he did because he failed. Well, he claims that he didn't have that much to do with it. He said that he was there more, too much. just there as, there as uh, yeah, like a, his name was on it more. Like Paul was more overseeing yeah. that, right? Fucking Paul. <laughs> They had Paul's changed. They had changed by then. But, you know, when does KISS really, you know, go above and beyond everything that is in their basic essence? Well, Daniel, I'm going to say that there's two times, and one of them you hate, and you'll look yeah. at me like I'm a Martian. I'll fucking kick your ass. The Elder. <laughs> yeah, The Elder. Be because of the creativity the born out of desperation and the final execution of what they did, regardless of the quality of it, it is exquisite. It is so well-crafted, yeah. so much attention True. to details, yeah. and a lot of it's garbage in terms of uh, the uh, Swedish guy, The Swedish guy you interviewed just listening to how he approached doing like a tribute album to the elder it makes you understand that they didn't go lazy on the elder they 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 went yeah. like overboard trying to make it great so it was really interesting to to listen to to that guy if you haven't heard that episode you need to go back and check it was, out wasn't he a great interview as well he, mm -hmm. he you oh, know, yeah. he, he was like, I just spoke over two hours in English. I'm like, yeah. e e perfectly as well, but also yeah, expressing, yeah. you know, the passion behind that project. Yeah. You uh, really that... felt the passion. And, and I haven't heard the album yet, but uh, but uh, just the interview you, you did with him made me like uh, curious. You were about sold it. on it, right? Yeah, even though I, I don't even <laughs> like The Elder, but I want mm. to hear that album. Good. Well, I'm going to get back to my point, which is that the el the elder is the masterpiece because of the desperation. They didn't have that same level of desperation in 1975 um, when Bob comes into the picture and they create what is undoubtedly the album by which all other Kiss albums have always been measured. Everything has always been a comparison with Destroyer or, you know, until Creatures comes along and then they're 
comparisons from different perspectives, one in terms of pure art, the other in terms of pure bombastic power. So I just have to ask Mark a question because I heard this guy on the podcast. He he ridiculed the Creatures album and, and thought everything was wrong. He, he, he talked about reverb on, on the song and the drums and the guitars and it totally destroyed the album. And when they did lick it up, they finally found the way it should sound. Creatures of the Night, can you actually say that it's a bad sounding record? You as a, with your no. knowledge. No. In fact, oh, yeah. most people that I know who are, you know, studio people or, or people who work in studios or people who have their own home studios and record their own records, they always put Creatures of the Night as sort of the standard in which they try to compare their recordings, but especially if you're in a hard rock end of things. I'm sure if you're a pop act or something, you're not going to use Creatures of the Night as a sonic template for your records, right? But for something that's hard rock or metal stuff, that's the standard by which people kind of base their stuff on. I mean, I know people who went deep into the rabbit hole trying to find the exact microphones that, you know, Michael James Jackson okay. used for the drums. How did he mic them? Did he use two overheads? Did he use four overheads? Did he use the four room mics? Like the, people wanted to know great detail of it. And the, the verb that people keep talking about, you seem to forget it's not a reverb that's added from a unit, <clears throat> most of this reverb comes from the use of the room microphones because the room, the drum room that they were set up in was so oh. big that when they pumped up those microphones, the reflections that came off the hits there gave it that sound. And you know, while uh, while Lick It Up sold better, to me, I think it sounds more sterile than, it doesn't have as much life to it. It doesn't have as much energy to it. It doesn't have as much character and like that, that that room verb and stuff was one of the things that I loved when I put on headphones. Like, wow, it sounds like you're sitting in this massive room listening to this band playing. Whereas Lick yeah. It Up sounds that they were in like kind of like a dead dry room and they were playing in there. I mean, sure, the album's still good. I love Lick It Up, but I don't think Ken it compares. Ken is smiling. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure he's agreeing here. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I just don't think that it sonically compares at all to Creatures of the Night. And on the eighth day, that's the uh, template to go after, isn't that, Cap? Yeah, yeah. That's the I best mean, song ever. You know, uh, whatever. I mean, the sound of those things is fine, the reverb, whatever the guy, I mean, that's just the guy's opinion. Um, but, you yeah. know, getting back to Julian's thing, you know, I, I was thinking about it, the elder. I didn't mention it, but uh, that is the one time Kiss did try to create art. That mm -hmm. was the one time. I don't think they tried to create art ever in their career. You no. know, either they're just writing in you know, a rock and roll, standard rock and roll, you know, chick songs and all that kind of stuff. They were scared. Um, right? um, well, I don't know if they were scared. Yeah. Just, that's they were they... stepping out of their comfort zone and using instruments <laughs> that they would never otherwise have used. They were writing with that's people true. that Thank they God. would never other have, uh, never otherwise have written with, writing about <laughs> subjects that they were barely qualified to even talk about, and <laughs> using crumb horns um, and, and just exquisite <laughs> detail. So when you have a masterpiece, yeah, you Rain. think of it, uh, use the, the painting you know, analogy that you have a Mona Lisa or you have a Salvador Dali. You know, so mm -hmm. the elders like a dolly because it's indecipherable in many aspects, <laughs> but it's still yeah. um, looked but, upon but as great art. It's uh, it is art. I think, I think they tried a bit too hard to create the masterpiece. I mean, you felt <laughs> that it was, uh, you know, they tried. It didn't come from the heart. They tried to put in the elements in order to create some sort of different masterpiece that they really weren't qualified doing. So well, they didn't yeah, have right, the but skill. They, but that goes back to, to my to point about it. desperation. Yeah, that's true. And, and, that's and, a good and then listen, and then, you know, go back to what, what you just said, Daniel. Uh, I'll get yep. to you, Mark, in a second. Um, listen to the guitars on Just a Boy and say that oh, there's yeah. no heart there. Yeah, and, and you got to remember also, too, what their reasoning was. I mean, th it's very clear that they said that they wanted to make a record that impressed the critics because they were so sick and tired at that point yes. to being that band that's, you know, always ridiculed by them. They were almost It's almost like they were trying to make a record where Rolling Stone and these other magazines that always mocked them would turn around and say, this is a fantastic Kiss album. So their intentions 
came from a bad place, I think. They were trying to criticize us, like trying to get those people to like them yeah. instead of worrying about the people that have always been behind them, their, their own True. fans, you know? No, they didn't even want to make an album. And if that was the only <laughs> fuel for the engine of, you know, we're going to do this album to make the critics eat it and say how brilliant we are, because mm -hmm. otherwise there would be no album in 1981. They had nothing going. They had nothing. Mm -hmm. Creativity. No. Everything that they were they were creating, yeah. whether it was at Ace in the Hall or in Toronto in May, they didn't like. They were rejecting mm -hmm. it, they even though lost. to our ears as fans, a lot of that stuff we love. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, they needed that fuel of, and, and that's all that Bob Ezrin could feed them other than glue. <laughs> yeah. But, but seeing this guy, you know, Gene from Alive 2 uh, making a video where a tear rolls down his cheek. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so off. It's weak. It's weak. It's weak. It's not on the eighth day. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, it's, it's not, not for the dance innocent. all over your face either. No. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right. So I guess it remains an open question as to whether Kiss has, uh, you know, recorded a masterpiece yeah. um, mm -hmm. or doesn't make them. I mean, you know, your opinions may well vary. Asylum may be a masterpiece to someone out there. Yeah, to some if, extent. If pound to pound, yeah. it, it just hits all those buttons that you need to be measured or sonic boom even. So let's move on into another part of this discussion today, because as we're reaching the end of the year, I'm sure Ken possibly noticed that today, Kiss 2020 Goodbye went goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> the website disappeared. Oh, did it? Yes. Oh, no. I God. gave up checking on that oh, stuff. You, you, right. you want to know how things are going? Well, it's gone. <laughs> so, All I know so. is... Uh... Um, through three sides of the coin, I think the most recent thing that Mark Cicchini, Cicchini, sorry, um, sorry, about, sorry, sorry about that, Mark. Um, but um, um, he said that he actually contacted Doc, so and that was a week ago, which is probably two weeks ago. So, uh, and again, Doc said he was going to look, you know, well, get on it or, or look into destroyer? it, but someone else had said the same thing. Uh, before on the forum, no, he, uh, he contacted him about uh, Kiss 2020. You know, oh, really? Goodbye. Okay. And it is, you know, the holiday seasons. A lot of people are are, are winding down corporate wise, so for <clears throat> most of the dogs slaving away in the states, uh, yeah. in regular jobs. So, so hope, hopefully, you know, so hopefully something will happen from it. I, yeah, I something did. That. The website disappeared. <clears throat> There's your answer. Okay, the website, but then, uh, yeah, that, but what's next? What, what Kiss 2020 goodbye? We didn't make well, promises. Or, you know, um, <laughs> well, I, you know. I'll just, I, I just talked to uh, Niels and the guys on, on that uh, Swedish podcast. Destroyer. They were kind of furious, yeah. They were kind of furious about the, the whole idea about uh, they not delivering the goods, you know. Uh, no, I think it's, it's crazy. Yeah, and I mean, they it took the money, and they didn't do anything about it. What do but you it think, goes, Mark? it goes every, it goes against everything though that Gene was always harping about. We are here for the fans. We are here. We listened. We hear you. You know, it's all bullshit. Okay. Because if that's the yeah. case, then he should have came in and been the first guy to step in and say, you know what? I've heard enough of these people complaining, and you know, it just doesn't make them look good. Sure, it, it's not them responsible as far as doing it it's not like gene and paul are in the back pressing these things and and then you know downloading these dvds and making them it's but it's their name on it you know it's they their, got their, they got their... they got paid yeah ex exactly they got paid a lot of money and, and yeah. they sold it on to us um you know so they're the middleman they're the broker they're the the shill yeah so yeah. <laughs> the shill that's good I don't know uh, what's up with that, but 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 the performance, the live show that we all watched, you know, uh, Ken and Julian, we watched it live, and it was a, I think I think it was one of the high high notes of of that year. It's super uh, fun. Yeah, it was yeah. super fun, and and the audience liked it as well. I think we got like seven and a half thousand views on that. Was it episode. worth a thousand bucks, fun? <laughs> I didn't pay a thousand bucks, so I just paid. Yeah. A, for for the live show because that was what I wanted and I got it 
and I was satisfied. But I do understand people who paid more in order to get all the stuff and things uh, must be really disappointed. And it's 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 a catastrophe. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, you, you feel ashamed that they did this because it, it's terrible. It's the yeah, Kiss I mean, Fire Festival. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I yeah, exactly. I, I've watched that documentary. It was kind of crazy. Uh, Fucking ridiculous. insane guy doing that festival, and it all went to. Uh, I just can't understand how they can like live with that. I mean, I mean, no, I don't mean Kiss now. I mean the company that's involved in doing it yeah. because yeah. you know. I mean, being just a little small rinky-dink thing myself, I mean, I, I lose sleep when I'm like two, a few days behind sending a record, yeah. you know? So, I mean, yeah. uh, how? And, and I mean, I've never stiffed anybody. Everybody who's ever ordered something has gotten something. I have a clean tracker and I'm very happy about that. But I mean, it's because of that, because that's the kind of shit keeps me up at night. You know, if somebody ordered for me something and an extra thing or this and that, I, I want to make sure it's out and gotten to them because that, that kind of thing can follow you and haunt you for a long time. And if you want to have people continuing to buy stuff off you, you better yeah, do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I know for now, for sure, Julian and Ken, for sure, I, I'm sure you'll think more than twice before you order something from that. Yeah. And I mean, look at Chikini. He said, he goes, you'll never order from Kiss Online again. I heard him on the three, three sides of the coin thing. He said he will never order... From three from the Kiss online store, Kiss online. That he said he got his yeah. stuff from Amazon in 16 yeah. hours after he ordered it. Yeah, it was you know? it was the same for me with destroy with the destroyer box set. But I, you know, I got I canceled out and didn't have all the the hassle because I wanted to make sure we were able to do our review show. So I, I mm -hmm. pinged I think I pinged you guys and said if you ordered from KO and they haven't sent a cancellation notice, cancel order from Amazon. I had mine this Saturday. I didn't have a day of release, you know, obviously like I'd hoped, but uh, I you know, it was just as well. But yeah. Kiss Online and, you know, Kiss Shilling Landmark and other things, it's it's like if you want us to go out to the cinemas to watch some biopic um, you know what, I may well be thinking twice about that, or if you're doing some, you know, superior platinum experience for that, I may well not be doing it. And maybe there are plenty of people in line behind me who will, that's fine. But in terms of my own risk point, I, you know, I've essentially lost a thousand bucks on that. I lost 2,500 on the, uh, Mountain View show this year, um, because of, nice. you know, a medical issue the day before that I wasn't able to go to the show. And of course the ticket in insurance has done everything they can to not pay out and every time you provide them with the next thing that they've asked for they ask for you for something else that's more <laughs> invasive so yes. um then again you know even if it wasn't for medical purposes missing that um i know my life was worth more than 2500 bucks and i don't know what my comfort yeah. level was with returning to live shows especially when it ended up killing a member of the crew perhaps mm -hmm. unconfirmed not known for certain but uh sure. rumored but if gene and paul got sick how many members of the audience got fucking sick during this outing but talking about the year in review you know, what are the biggest and me most meaningful things to have happened to you this year in music, not just KISS? You know, you know comparing <clears throat> what KISS has done versus what maybe some other bands that you're, you're <clears throat> rabid followers of. And did you, some, did you enjoy something more than KISS this year? Mm. And if so, <laughs> what? Ken, I mean, you're always kind of on the radar in terms of having a diverse taste, as is Mark, uh, but you, you pick up some pretty interesting stuff. Where has Kiss fallen in to kind of your um, your scale of being worthy in 2021? Uh, well, I mean, for me, and, and you just mentioned the... Uh, you know the mountain view concert um <clears throat> so again that was a that was a really great experience yeah there were some problems with it but it was a great experience i mean i didn't think i was going to be able to see them when you know an, another time i thought that oakland show uh the year before that you and i were at julian where it's going to be the last one and and uh when this mountain view came up i was like oh wow and this is, you know, of course, during COVID, and it was in September, you know, still in, during COVID, but um, September, um, and didn't know if it was going to really happen. I was thinking, oh, well, this could get canceled, or but it actually happened. So 
was lucky enough to uh, see them and and it turned out to be a great thing. I mean, it has to be the closest I've ever been um, to them. You know, I've been in front row before, but this front row was closer than the, you know, like the front row, Julian, you remember, had a bigger, a good size gap. This was right up there. This is a very small gap. You're practically on the stage. Um, so it and was you had plenty really, of space really to the side. And it's lower. Here. The stage is lower too, so they were lower too. Um, it weren't it was a bit higher in Oakland. So yeah, I, I was able to experience the whole the whole thing um, right there, and and you know yeah, and the drumsticks from Eric, you know, was a great bonus and all that kind of stuff. So I was just very happy uh, that they I was able to see them, and this got well, be I keep saying it's got got to be the last time, uh, but I keep saying that I said that two times ago. You know, two years ago in Sacramento. So, um, uh, so that's that was the big deal for me. The other little things, you know, Kiss has always been the number one thing. Um, s- some other stuff, not a lot happened this year for at least for me. I mean, it's been you know the Beatles and all that other stuff. You know, Let It Be, Get Back, um, that's very cool. Um, but Kiss is always the number one thing, and and I think. Finally, with the at least dist, you know destroyer coming out, starting the box set deal, you know, um, was a as a it was a great thing to happen. Finally, that we've been asking for for several years now, mm. um, but it finally happened. I, I look forward to uh, more, and you know, next year. But nice. Ken, uh, ha- have you watched that uh, Beatles documentary? That I did. Have been raving about. Is it as good as people say? Yeah, it it is good. It's very interesting, um, and I don't know if they've. Re- you know, it's it's a, it, to me it, the creativity is very interesting from the standpoint of of them actually you know writing a song from nothing, um, mm-hmm. like the actual song "Get Back." The birth of "Get Back" is just. You know, on the bass, you know, Paul just had this rhythm, rhythm, you know, and and he didn't know what to do. And then he, it started like building, and then each time they came back another day, had more ideas, and it became started to, you know, very interesting. And then how the band worked off each other. Well, maybe you know, we should do this here. You know, would that would be a nice touch to do this? Yeah. Or John would throw in a couple of words on the lyric. I oh, want you to say this, and, you know. And and they do that back and forth. Um, uh, I, I find I found John Lennon to be more subdued, actually. Um, and Alan. I think Paul, during this time, yeah. <laughs> well, Paul was leading more around this time the band, I think, uh, where John was more before Brian Epstein, you know, died. Um, so yeah, it was very interesting. But the best part of it, Daniel. For me, the real best part of it is the actual performance of them, of them live on the rooftop, mm. and, and yeah. it's it's just that was the magic, you know, playing those four together, playing in unison, playing live, and then showing the people down below and asking them, "Do you know who this is? You know, the Beatles." <laughs> Is it, is it, Talking is about it, who's, magic, who's in 2022, like we will finally see the magic, or we won't. Yeah, no. the magic. Yeah, yeah. So it, anyway, it's, it's going to do like Kiss 2020 goodbye. I know it's. I know that's off topic, Beatles, but you know, what are you going to say? Well, it's Beatles not. That, you know, I deliberately no. asked that you know be measured in because you know during the year we did have the A and E kiss documentary over two that nights. was and, and yeah then, that's true and then you have the yeah. beatles eight hours that, that kind of blows everything else <laughs> out of the water um yeah. you know for those of us that are fans <laughs> of both i mean you, you didn't even mention kiss being I, on a and e or you didn't get to because, it because because i don't i don't think to me they said they call it definitive i don't think it's definitive there was good <clears> great <throat> spots great spots with gene and paul you know when they're so, talking uh, together and together but it's it's not. They call it definitive. It says definitive, but it's not definitive. They st- they still haven't done the definitive uh, Kiss documentary. I'm st- that I'm still waiting for. 
Yeah, it'll take more than Peter Jackson to do a definitive of Kiss because it's just an impossibility. <laughs> Daniel, what about you? You know, your year in review as a Kiss fan, or has it been more about other things going on in your life? I think Kiss came up with two great ideas this year. The first thing was, of course, releasing Tokyo 2001. Uh, keep on doing that kind of stuff, you know, releasing uh, soundboard recordings. That's a great idea. And mm -hmm. that particular <clears throat> record sounded awesome. Yeah. Or do you say awesome? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Either awesome. way, it sounds awesome. awesome. Okay, yeah. awesome. Uh, uh, so uh, that's one great thing they did, and I hope they continue that one. The other thing was, of course, the box set. Continue that idea producing more box sets i'd like to see something on a live uh, maybe a uh, love gun and uh, revenge but i don't know if that will ever happen i, I remember listening to bruce uh, um, on some sort of podcast where he uh, played uh, a recording of uh, an early take on i think it was Better or something when that where where they had a rapper on the song, and Gene actually mm -hmm. wanted that to be on the record. But but you know that kind of stuff, you know, <laughs> releasing revenge uh, and hearing that kind of stuff, I, I'd like that. But but I think that's two good ideas that they can can keep on doing even though they might not be able to tour anymore. So that to me that were those two ideas were the great ideas that KISS had. And of course the documentary was kind of fun, but as Ken said, uh, you know, as a KISS die hard fan, it wasn't really for us. But, but I think it was cool that they managed to get some airtime with that one. Uh, but talking about stuff outside of KISS, I'd say for me, I, I found a new um, band that I really liked from the get go. Uh, it's a Swedish band called Nestor, N-E-S-T-O-R. Uh, and listen to them, I kind of wondered, why do I like this band so much? And then I noticed their first single is called 1989. They make great videos, you know, uh, throwback videos to, to the 80s. And uh, I'll fight hell to hold you. I heard I'll fight hell to hold you several times in the song. Mm. Mm. So really, I, uh, it was some sort of nostalgic feeling that, that made me like like that song. And then the second single, what the hell? This is, I've had enough into the fire. <laughs> so they rehashed, you know, that classic riff from I've had enough. Do, 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 do. They kind of used that one and made it almost even better you know so if you haven't checked out nestor check it out 1989 is the first single and on the run is the second one the first one is like i'll fight hell to hold you and the second one is i've had enough into the fire hmm. so if you like 80s kiss that's a band you have to check it out and all three of you guys you need to check it out on spotify tomorrow so that's kind of my, yeah. and the Kiss Cruise, you know, Bruce Kulik always, you have to mention Bruce Kulik and his band. Now they're thinking about uh, taking this out on the road. So that's really interesting. I think they have a gig in Vegas or something. Mm, and hopefully they, they do something more with that. Even though, you know, first time I heard the band, I was blown away. Second time as well. Now, not so much, you know, I've heard it. Uh, once and twice, uh, a, f a few times. So it's not, you know, he's done it a few times. But still, it's it's great. But but uh, you know, he should have done this, this right off the bat the first time he he did it on the Kiss Cruise. But but uh, hopefully he'll he'll uh, make it to the, to this part of the world. I'm not, uh, you know, oh, he, I don't he, think he, he will. Keep, but keeping that <clears throat> era of songs alive in yeah. Europe. Yeah, that would yeah. be the place to do it as well. The place mm -hmm. where it would be appreciated True. the most, uh, much more than showing, you know, 
playing in the states, unfortunately, and maybe playing to 150 like Union did. But maybe it, who knows? Maybe there's some hype. Some uh, people longing to It's kind, it's to kind of that. interesting. It's kind of inter interesting because you know Wasp uh, that opened for Kiss uh, plenty of years ago. Yep. Yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. They Sorry. don't even play America anymore. But in Sweden, which is a pretty small country, they have like 10 shows the next year. Mm. Yeah. So I'll be happy to go and go where the money is. I can hear Andy yeah. grumbling from here as you talk yeah, about no, Wasp. I, I watched your <laughs> podcast about Wasp. So I'll see you then, but Andy won't. Yeah, thanks a lot for reminding us. All right, Mark, <laughs> so, you've had a pretty good year musically, I think. Um, so, so why don't you give us your highs and lows in and out of Kiss Land? Well, for Kiss, I would say that the big thing is pretty much what Daniel said earlier, as far as the, you know the soundboard recording that came out. I thought that was a good uh, thing that came out, and the destroyer box obviously was something that you know. Just like you guys, we've been harping and harping and harping about for them to do something like that. And finally that it came out is a good thing. Now for me, the one thing that always kind of bugs me about KISS is the same thing that kind of bugs uh, Ken, is the lack of new stuff that comes from this band. You know, mm. there's nothing new down the pipe coming from this band. And let's face it, there's not going to be anything new coming from this band. So I kind of get my satisfaction in that from other bands. Now, surprisingly enough, one of the bands that did, that did actually kind of shock me, that gave us new material, finally, and I was so happy about it, was Yes. And you know me, I'm a big person with the Yes uh, podcast. I'm, I'm on there. We had we had our 500th, uh, 500th episode this year, too, so that was a big thing for us. And when the uh, new album came out, Quest, I was ecstatic. I mean, that podcast has done really well. I mean, we've done so many episodes and... You know, their management team has started to appreciate it to the fact of where we've gotten a lot of good interviews. John Anderson, hmm. you know, uh, Alan White, Bill Bruford, uh, Steve Howe, Jeff Downs multiple times, Billy Sh Like We've got so many interviews done because they finally realized that, you know, we were a legit podcast that supported this band strongly you know and we were and so we got you know we got advances of the yes new, new yes album and stuff like that so that was a big thing for me it's something that i really really enjoyed about this year uh, another thing that i liked was that there was a new series that i discovered through Bandcamp called the brown acid series that's like a comp that comes out has been coming out over the last couple of years and i've really really enjoyed it i've spent the better part of this year catching up on all the volumes of that one so that's been something i've really had great fun with. Um, 2021 has been the year of which I deep dived into my collecting of Marillion stuff, 12 inch mm. singles, albums. And just the other day, I finally got this. It's on CD, but I can't find the album for less than $10 million. So I finally got the, the Thieving Magpie. I love that. On double CD. Yeah, it's a great, great album. And it's a, that's like a Dutch version of it. Um, so I'm really being happy about my deep dive into Marillion. And another artist that you guys know very well, I'm a big fan of, is David Bowie. And just recently he released that Brilliant Adventures box set that just came out, you know? And mm -hmm. I, I love those things. I mean, that to me is, is, a, is an example of a box set that's kind of a bit different than the Kiss one, but I like it for different reasons. You know, while the Kiss one has a lot of cool collectibles and the redone tour program and, you know, collectibles that are hard to find or expensive to find. The Bowie thing is kind of a bit different. He, he focuses more just on the music. So there's like, you know, five different records there. There's bonus live, unreleased live album stuff. There's a whole three CD or four LP uh, B-sides and unreleased material and remixes on there. And, you know, it comes with like a nice big, you know, 80 page book that has all the production notes from the producer. So those are the kind of box sets I like the other side of the box set world where that's more focused on the the music and the stuff so it's been a good year for me I think musically and for collecting this sort of stuff so I'm very happy about that My I year. was wondering Mark uh, any kiss covers in 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 the workings for you uh, I mean you you've done some in the past any any thoughts on that 
Yeah, I mean, for this new record that's coming out, the uh, book three, the final chapter of the story that I'm doing, uh, I'm just about to get started on finishing up the extras, the B-sides and all that stuff on there. And I'm always, I always do covers as part of it. So I'm going to do a Kiss cover as tradition. I've done, you know, Charisma. I've done Shout It Out Loud, you know. Uh, so I'm not sure yet which Kiss song I'm going to do for this one, but... Obviously, I'm going to pick something. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure why. Do you have something in mind? You think that would be a good? I, I I always pick like King of the Mountain. I've had enough into the fire. You know, the '80s don't get enough do. You know, if you could do anything in that vein, I, I would love it. But but that's mm. just me. Yeah, a silent fan. Silent fan. I'm a huge asylum fan. Yeah, I know that, but uh, it's a masterpiece. Yeah, it is. <laughs> 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 I just wish they picked a different cover, picked different costumes, and it would be a whole other thing, you know. Mm. Yeah. That worked well, against them over time, at least. Yeah, I mean, for for as far as that goes, you know, I'm doing a, I'm gonna do a Kiss song for sure. I, I've already picked cool. out my Bowie song that I'm gonna do, uh, and I'm gonna do one other band thing but i think i'm going to be a little bit more obscure with this one with the third band it's going to be something that people are not going to probably expect to hear so i'm going to do that and i'm probably going to throw in a a bonus project gemini unreleased song this time in there as well so uh just gives them something a bit different and i have a big big announcement to come in the next day or two about the new album so uh i think people will be excited about it once i start talking about that yeah, Very just cool. real quick, I just have to mention, you know, Crazy Nights, we all know uh, how it sounds and uh, and all that, but uh, there are some good songs in there. Mm -hmm. It would be kind of cool to, to hear a song off of Creatures of the... No, not Creatures of the Night. Crazy. Crazy Nights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, having it being recorded the way it's supposed to be, and I think it could uh, take off. It would be so nice if we had the multi-tracks with just Paul's vocals from there and a band could re-record the music underneath, mm. you know, mm. um, to toughen it up a bit, to give it a, a different yeah. feel. That would be that'd be kind of fun, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, my 2021. Mm. Mm. Obviously, I, I'm thrilled that the Destroyer 45 box came out. Very, very happy. Very pleased with how it turned out. And it, it's, you know... I'm over 30 listens of the whole damn thing at this <laughs> point. Uh, so it really wow. has provided a lot of, you know, listening pleasure um, cool. and reading through all the material and looking at the pictures and now looking at the German version to see which logos they missed converting uh, in, in, <laughs> in, their, in their product as well is is kind of mm -hmm. good uh you know they mark mentioned it the off the soundboard that was a great start there were you know kiss did their first one of those with tokyo 2001 and i was very happy with it and then aerosmith did you know the road starts here a 1971 soundboard um rehearsal um and that's a, a, a story of two different bands doing the same thing differently so kisses came in the brown cover and that's it and aerosmith came in a gatefold brown cover with all new photos an essay uh, a printed inner dust sleeve of the actual real box and all the accoutrements mm -hmm. that went with that and it was available on cassette as well for record store day first so um those sorts of releases are, are something that I, i'm enjoying very much more now than anything else the a and e documentary it was good for what it was but you know once we get to the yeah. beatles it's like forget about it you know that that's just something that is life affirming as a lifetime beatles fan and something that i will watch several more times just because it's the amount of times i've gone back to that get back moment or the let it be moment or so many moments <clears throat> of just watching the live performance on the roof it's the beatles damn it so it made me fall back in love a little bit with the Beatles. I hadn't bought the last couple of Super Deluxes. I'm not a fan of the White Album, never have been. I bought that immediately. Uh, bought the Abbey Road one, which I'd skipped as well. And of course, got the Let It Be one because I wanted all the get back the various versions that yeah. were on there. And that thing is absolutely stunning in terms of when you start talking about a Super Deluxe, that really is. Um, 
those three I've just mentioned, I mean, that's, I, I, I don't even remember how much it adds up to in terms of playlists. I think it's like nine hours of playlist, mm -hmm. something <laughs> outrageous and, and really lengthy. So that has been probably the key thing. I think 2021's year, I wrapped up the Aerosmith, the first volume of On Tour. So a lot of my year has been wrapped up in Aerosmith. But in doing the Aerosmith stuff, I've dug back into the Rolling Stones a lot to really get more back into their roots and the Yardbirds and Jeff Beck and mm. reliving and rediscovering a lot of stuff that I haven't heard or listened to since my early teens. Uh, because I went down a different path. I've spent so much time just playing every album between uh, Aftermath and Goat's Head sequentially, mm. including the Super Deluxes. That run of albums the Stones put out, if you haven't explored the Stones, go on Spotify and go buy them. And then I think the last musical highlight of the year, uh, Outside of Kiss, well, there's two thoughts on this, is uh, number one, I found a couple of Pink Floyd releases that I'd missed as well in previous years, the remix of Momentary Lapse of Reason, which is an album I consider to be a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. It's one that, like Jean-Michel Jarre, uh, Rendezvous takes me to a very happy place musically. It just lets me escape into a, a completely different plane. Uh, and then I realized that they had also given Delicate Sound of Thunder the treatment as well. So that that's an underlooked Pink Floyd era that I really appreciate it. And then new music. I got a new album from Halloween, mm -hmm. who I love. That's another one of my 80s, what was, you know, guilty pleasure back in when becoming a fan because of, you know, The Walls of Jericho and Keeper of the Seven, Key, uh, Seven Keys Part One. Yes. You know, and then part two and live in the UK. Mm -hmm. And that's afterwards I kind of fell off. Uh, so I went back and rediscovered all those intervening albums that I had uh, missed once band members started juggling in and out. And then, of course, my other love, Foo Fighters, Medicine at Midnight. Long delayed because of COVID, but <clears throat> it finally came out. So, you know, it's been a good year musically. I got to tour New England with Andy and we went to Bill O'Coin's, you know, childhood home. And then to, you know, it's... it's grave marker and then i dragged andy's butt up to new hampshire to all these aerosmith sites and we stood on <laughs> the, the stages where aerosmith played you know their second third and fourth shows um cool you, you know which you can't do with kiss the coventry's gone daisy's gone so to be able to do that to a band that had a slight head start on kiss was really cool to go up to the barn in sunapee and to go hang out and at the anchorage um, you know, in terms of people who are interested in rock and roll history to make those pilgrimages, we do it in New York City when we go to the Dress to Kill corner and the subway, the <laughs> fountain, the rehearsal loft and all these cool KISS sites. But there are so few left for KISS that really have that same kind of meaning as standing on the actual freaking stage in Hopedale, Massachusetts, uh, hmm. with the walls peeling and it, it's been a good year for music and there's probably you know other things that i've missed these podcasts have been a great part yeah. of the year for me as always yeah. you know getting together with friends whether it's on our show or on some of the other shows i occasionally True. you know uh, appear on and i'm sure it's the same for you mark with other cast of characters mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the yes or other shows that you do um you know that's an important part of staying in touch with friends well, you know, Julian, that, that's a great point, because if you look back a few years, like in the middle 90s, the podcast didn't exist, but there you had the KISS fanzines, it's sort of the same thing. But back in the 90s, you had the KISS fanzines with, it, you know, that guy from Italy, and you had Ron Roxburgh from, from Canada. And now it's easier to get into the KISS family with the podcasts, but it's really the same thing. You, you're kind of rehashing the same stuff and being happy doing it, you know, getting, um, you know, a, a feel of happiness. And it's always good to find other nerds because there aren't too many around. So mm -hmm. I always appreciate this, you know, being able to go deep into a subject is kind of hard. I mean, how many subjects do we know that we can go real deep into? I mean, as a human being, you have maybe one or two. And for us, KISS is one of them. So it's 
it's real fun f for me and I, I guess for you as well to to discuss this every way it's possible and but but i have one question for you julian i mean you've released a few books you have this one you have this one and a few others these are my two favorites uh how are things going with the aerosmith book it's out yeah but are people buying it it's quiet it's a start i haven't done much press yet or much hype for it which i like to give a shout yeah. out to the guys at three sides for mentioning and on their latest episode mark did get his copy uh and at least at least the second one was printed the right way around manufacturing faults do happen that's why i use amazon mm -hmm. who fix things so i very much appreciate them mentioning it you know it's very early start and yeah. you, you know i'm getting my head around how i want to promote it because i don't want to go um and talk about the same thing to a bunch of um you know podcasts and outlets and everything so right now it's coming up with some strategy getting it out was the key but that's another one of my musical high points actually and thank you for asking about and mentioning that because getting to spend hour after hour with the manager of the band from 72 to 84 going line by line through that thing and mm. the amount of side conversations that are off the record but about the music business are, are just you know that is gold to someone who's interested in the history and in the business and to have had you know some of my perspectives about kiss corrected by him mm -hmm. um which is golden or the hours you know spent talking to guys from the road crew or with night bob uh, it, you know all of that you know the people who were there it's one thing to overcompensate by not being there by writing these books about uh subjects and topics it's another to talk to those people who were there who remember things who um, go off into these side conversations about the dolls or Hanoi rocks. Uh, you, you know, all the, you never know where a conversation is going to go with some some people. Yeah. So it that's the value of music and kind of what I do. So, uh, like I said, the Aerosmith books out. Uh, volume two is getting knocked into shape. I've got a a, a Kiss book that's you know I'm still yeah. gathering stuff for mass hysteria to see if that turns into reality or not no idea if Hopefully. it will i hope well, so this, the scandinavian we, we mob's hope. got a, no the scandinavian mob has a book coming out next year yeah uh, that's you know a good and, one. and they got vinnie poncia you know yeah. which is extensive is a, interviews with <clears throat> vinnie poncia but also <clears throat> the other interviews. things that they do as part of their creative process i mean you look at the final product because you can see it and read it so you know what they do and how they do it and i've heard nothing but good things even if i'm not able to, to read it myself i've never heard anyone it's say a, a bad thing about any of their projects so even from you know that third party leaning out the window perspective i'm excited that that's coming out because we're going to hear stories translated into english about it um you know and, and it's just going to add to the knowledge of what we thought yeah. we know and what we know we know and what we don't know the last thing they released, Ken asked me, can't you translate like a chapter or two? And I, I kind of translated <laughs> it. But then the, the authors came back at me, you can't translate that. <laughs> because we might do it in the future. So unfortunately, otherwise I will just translate the whole damn thing and put it out on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But uh, Carl and uh, I, I, still, I, I still really don't understand why they don't release it in English. Uh, I'm clueless. Mm. Maybe Julian, what do you think? You, you as an author, why do they only release it in Swedish? I think it's such a missed opportunity. Yes, because it people is. Would I, this. I don't think it is in one way. I think there's such a large segment of fans in certain markets that don't appreciate anything who would cut and paste it all online the moment they have it. Um, I, I don't know their reasons. And, and frankly, no. I don't care. I'm glad that they're doing something only for their market and people. This yeah. is my people. This is my crowd. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> citing crazy, crazy nice. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I feel the same, but at the same time, I feel you guys miss out on a whole lot of great books. I mean, the first one was real good. The second was, one was almost as good. And now they're focusing on 79 to 80. And he's managed to land 
several interviews w- with Vinnie Poncia. He's never done any interviews, as far as I know. I know. I don't know any interview with Stop him. Stop reminding me. So this would be something mm. you would like to sink your teeth in. Yeah. Uh, I will. I surely will. But 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 I would like you to do to be able to do it as well. So I really don't understand. Is it has it something to do with economics in some way or because Carl could translate his own book, you know, in a few hours. You know, he's really good at English, so so it wouldn't be a problem. But, but I really don't understand. Do they want to make it kind of exclusive? You know, just for the skin, the the Seems Swedish like guys. It. Seems I'm, like I'm not it. sure. I, I think it's a missed opportunity. I think, I th- I think you're right. Loads. I think you're right because I think that uh, as a as an artist or as a writer, I mean, wouldn't isn't that desire to reach as many people yeah. as you can within you? You know what I mean? Like, wouldn't you want as many people to read what you've done and to appreciate it and to like it? I mean, who's, I'm not saying that he, they don't appreciate and enjoy having their Swedish people write to them and say, this is a fantastic book. But I mean, I, I'm sure they would be just as happy if they had people from Canada or yeah. people from, you know, South America or wh- wherever in, around the world saying that this is a great book. Yeah. So know? there you go, Mark. That's what they should do. They should have someone translated into Spanish. <laughs> there you, <go. laughs> you know, you mentioned uh, Vinny Pancia, and it just yeah, it's, it's kind of off topic, but Vinny Pancia, That's I had I had re- recently purchased a vinyl album. It's a test pressing. Melissa Manchester. No, close. Uh, Andy Williams. Mm. It's an early Andy Williams, and and the only reason I bought it is because it was he re- recorded one of the songs of Solitaire, which is a Neil Sedaka song. So that's one of the reasons I got it. But the other reason I got it is, is he signed the actual uh, white cover with his his signature. Um, so that was an error thing. And then, but uh, I was looking at going and kind of researching back and who played on it. Uh, Vinny Pancia played a lot of the guitars mm-hmm. on on the album, uh, which I thought, thought was very interesting. He was a and, and people like Jim, like Jim Keltner was on drums, mm-hmm. and yeah, and th- these are solid musicians that they oh, yeah. uh, that he had for this album that he was trying to kind of be mainstream and you know the early '70s kind of thing. Um, but I just thought, oh wow, Vinny Pancia. This. Like, read, read up on Vinny's musical history before yeah. he got into the production world, because there used to be a very good website that went back into the 60s and way back into his pathway, which is really fascinating as a story on its own, regardless of any of the things that happen later. Um, that, that's one I, I, I strongly recommend. I, I, you know, Wikipedia is what it is, but there was a website that was very good. It even had, I seem to remember it had some uh, audio samples as well of some yeah. of the stuff. And uh, again, it's so many years since I last read that. Let's move into a wish list for 2022, Daniel. Oh, do I have to start? Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, Mark. Let's see. Mark has started. <laughs> Are we talking about Kiss? Or just in general. Yeah, let's keep let's keep it kissified for this one. Okay. Well, I think for sure what I'd like to see, and I'm sure Daniel will probably agree with this, and he mentioned it earlier, is to get another one of these soundboard recordings to come out next year. I mean, I'd like to hear something, you know, maybe a little bit earlier than what came out, like you know, maybe something in the early '80s, maybe like something from Lick It Up or something from, you know animalized to her or who knows just something a little bit more earlier it doesn't have to necessarily be 70s stuff but you know a, a good soundboard from a bit of an earlier time period might be nice to get um you know as far as the box sets go i think that i think that it would be fair to say that the box set did well for kiss as far as reaction from the fans will the fans want another box set i think that's a resounding yes so wish list yeah, but bring out another box. I mean, what 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 record to do next? I mean, that's anybody's call. You know that there's so many records. I'm sure everybody would could think of a, a thousand of them to write down which one they would want to have. You know, done next. But you know, for for me, I, I I love rock and roll over. Maybe do something along that for a box. Who knows? Uh, but those are the two things for sure that I'd like to have. I mean, I don't want to step on Ken's territory. But I know he'll hope that I, I know that he'll hope for uh, something new from Kiss 
to come out in 2022, but I know that's going to be a, you know, that's going to be beating a dead horse Long a bit shot. with that topic. But, you know, uh, but I, I I think that those two things, if those two things happen, I'll be happy with that because I think that's about the result. That's, that's about the extent of what I believe can happen in 2022. Okay, Daniel. Yeah, uh, I have to agree with Mark. He's so wise. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, sound boards, of course. Sound boards, of course. Uh, uh, there must be several they can pick and choose from. I'd mm -hmm. like something from uh, the Creatures era, something from mm -hmm. the Lick It Up era, something from the uh, the Asylum era, of course. Uh, I don't know. They, they seem to don't. They, it seems as if they didn't record a lot from that era. But my favorite era. Sound wise, it is of course the re the revenge era. So something from you know Wembley '92 or uh, uh, Melbourne, you know, fifteen thousand fans. Mm -hmm. They played two shows in Melbourne in '95, and <clears throat> from from <clears throat> what I know, they were almost sold out concerts. Ten to fifteen people. Uh, no, not ten to fifteen. Ooh, ten to fifteen. Ten to fifteen thousand <laughs> people. Standing this is room. a little bit better. <laughs> Stumbling on the words here, yeah. So, uh, a show from Melbourne or you know, like Wembley, ooh, that would be really cool. A soundboard, so that's what I'm hoping for. I know a lot of people are hoping for to get stuff from the 70s, but we already have a live and a live too. I don't, I think they're kind of hard to top, but from the 80s. You know, Kiss uh, Animalized Live Uncensored is kind of cool, but would like something, you know, a little bit raw, a little bit more soundboardish. Uh, so something like that, I would eat up. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, I want to see the band live a final time. That's my main goal. I mean, at this point in time, they might not be the Kiss of you know '84 when they ran around the stage. Doing crazy stuff, playing. Well, they are the kiss old. of eighty-four years old. <laughs> 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 Almost, it's pretty close. But uh, I have to say, when I watched them back in two thousand nineteen in in Norway, uh, uh, it was uh, I didn't really mind, you know, the the playback uh, uh, and. Uh, uh, you know, it was sort of stale at times. You know, they didn't move around a lot, but. I can't find another band that makes me as happy when I'm watching them live. Even though Kiss is going at, you know, 50%, they're still better than all the rest of the bands to me. So so, so I'd like to see them one more time, you know. Uh, that would be real cool. Uh, and, you know, they've been postponing the concerts for a few years now. So, so I'm hoping for, for one last hooray. And um, other things, uh, you know, when I did the podcast with the guys from from uh, the Swedish podcast and uh, the Swedish Kiss Army, one of the guys told me, I, I asked him, what what are your what are you hoping for when it comes to the next year? And he said, I hope that Kiss quits. <clears throat> it was kind of you know, feel shocking. Like Shocking, uh, soul, what do you say, you know? Uh, soul crushing? Yeah, soul crushing. But I do see his point. I mean, I don't want to see Gene 80 years up, 80 years old up on stage, you know, <clears throat> the demon boots uh, and, uh, and some sort of wheelchair or something to <laughs> get him to drool his blood. I mean, they need to. He'll, he'll be it. drooling blood inappropriately when he shouldn't be drooling. <laughs> but that's already happened. You know, when I watched them in Trondheim in Norway, that's a city in Norway, uh, my girlfriend said she was with me. She said, uh, What's happening with that guy? And you know, sometimes when he does the tongue thing, he, he like he, he drools. <laughs> That doesn't look good, she said. It looks like an old guy from the retirement home. You know, he can't control his liquids. <laughs> it's and, time for uh, his meds. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, so time for his meds. <laughs> so, so, so then, actually, 
I mean, it doesn't feel good, but but they need to call it a quits in a year or two. And before they do that, I really hope to see them live. And um, so that's what I'm hoping for: a live concert, a good soundboard, mm, and then uh, they have to end it. That's just a, a way. You know, is. Metallica just did two shows for its 40th yeah, anniversary and put yeah, them up uh, free on Amazon Prime, I, I guess. So not not free, awesome. but nearly free. Um, yeah, the big boys, huh? All right, yeah, Merry Wish, Miss Ken. Boys. What do you want in 2022? Mm. Well, <laughs> no music, no music. I'm not going to say new music because uh, I probably said that last year and every year before. Um, yeah, that... it, it doesn't look like it's anything's going to happen there. So, um, yeah, I agree yeah. with uh, more of the, you know, of the soundboard, which I think they are doing. Um, but, yeah, I, I would represent the, the 80s. Or or maybe a good soundboard from uh, Hot in the Shade, because that's yeah. a great set list at that time. That was sure. a very good mixture of uh, music. So that, um, and I'd like to still do a, a record store day release of something. I mean, it'd yeah. be nice if they did anything record store day. Um, so maybe they can look at Aerosmith what Aerosmith did and maybe kind of do something like that. Um, Even but, if it was uh, like the Coventry, you know? Yeah, put that, yeah, put that through the something. audio cleanup and uh, put it onto vinyl probably as a gatefold. There's plenty yep. of pictures from that, uh, you know, as a cassette mm-hmm. and CD as well. You know, exactly. Exactly. It wouldn't be too difficult. So, and, and you know, they could press like 5,000. It wouldn't even be new. It would sell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then um, definitely the box sets. I know they talked on their show about, and I, I agree that they need to not release one box set a year. They need to do at least at least two a year because the fan base that are buying all these things, I mean, that's a lot of albums to make box sets for. They, they need to get moving and uh, maybe put one out towards you know the middle of the year um, and then another one towards the end of the year uh, of next year. So I would hope to get two next year. Um, is it possible? Yeah, I guess it's possible, but with everything and everyone making, you know, it's more difficult. It seems to to get manufacturing these days and and shipping and all that kind of stuff um, and be coordinated and in it all. Um, it may be a little difficult, but I hope it's some another box set. You know, whether it's the Elder or or Creatures of the Night or the first album, um, whatever, I, and alive too. I mean, I still say it. nothing's been done. Everything's been skipped. The, that's that album's been skipped from all the 70s yeah. stuff that they've done and it yeah. seems it keeps getting skipped and and I, I i really want something done for alive too so you know we'll we'll see um concerts you know and daniel said about them wrapping it up yeah i think they are planning to wrap it up at the end of the year or or at the very beginning of 2023 i think is going to be because that's to be like 50 years i think that'll that'll be the perfect time to just wrap it up in January, what late January? Um, anyway, of of uh, twenty twenty three. So end it there. It'll be done, and then they'll they can continue releasing whatever um, <laughs> from the past and just continue to merchandise and all that stuff. All right, my wish must for 2022. Uh, I already said the Coventry. Yeah, the roar of the grease paint starts here, you know, to play on uh, Aerosmith's mm-hmm. title. You know, put out the additional 10 minutes or whatever it is from uh, that was taped over from the night before and put that out for Record Store Day, a rock, and roll over, rock and Roll Party in Tokyo. That's another Record Store Day. That would be perfect yeah. outside of box sets. I think box sets is really where it's at. The I call the off the soundboards filler. 
because when you're not really giving any attention to your packaging, that's all they are. You're throwing them out there and they're just for pleasure. And uh, you, come on, uh, I don't need anything fancy. Is a gatefold and all that nice? Yeah, Aerosmith, I raved about, but it is the music stupid. Um, so I just give me the music. I'll be very happy if they continue to do those, but I think you, they could probably manage more than once a year with the lack of effort that goes into it other than the hassles that no doubt are part of and parcel of doing anything with kiss when it comes to music box sets absolutely um destroyer just gives me a taste for more and with it being the 30th anniversary of revenge with us still having bruce and eric uh actively remembering to be have their stories captured for that era to have the demo rehearsals with eric carr to ha have you know we know that there's the uncut stuff for a live three to combine those both in because uh, a live three will never otherwise get a treatment nor do, it doesn't deserve one uh to begin with plus the club shows so yeah. i i think revenge mm -hmm. would make a fantastic product and if you look at the design of what they did with destroyer 45 and now think about how how the revenge cover would look on a silver or burnished gunmetal metallic type box it actually makes me very excited to ponder plus i know a lot of the material that could go in there for people to hear not only that you know some of the unreleased stuff i think it could be a very good representation of that lost era of kiss and you know the forgotten time of that lineup with eric and bruce um but in terms of the people all still being around to be interviewed and have the story captured yeah. now's the time to do it bob ezrin is still around eric isn't um you know but there is archival stuff um so it it, it really would be nice for them to be able to get it out in the 30th anniversary year rather than you know waiting until down the road to make sure that at least one album is celebrated from the non makeup era yeah and if, if there's mm -hmm. only going to be one i think rightfully as it much as i'd done. love I, I would love for there to be a crazy nights one just because yeah. i think I, I rave about the demos and but i think some of the live but i think revenge would be the right candidate and would really um and i think i, I think the people. band is most proud of that record from the 80s and 90s yeah it's a I mean, masterpiece Paul rave raves about it still at <laughs> this time <laughs> and you have guys like lonnie that would eat it eat it up you know buy all of it so uh, uh, but, but the only thing I'm not so certain about is the amount of uh, uh, material is there enough material around I, I've heard some stuff from Bruce and you know you have that instrumental of course but uh, hopefully they can uh, there, a ton. there is there's a ton you say it's a, it's a ton what Julian knows by the box when it comes out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the box. No, uh, I, I mean, if you think of all the A tribute, tribute album from Lonnie, all, all the rehearsals that exist, the drum tracks yeah. that weren't used, yeah. uh, that were redone by other drummers, the rehearsal mm -hmm. sessions from April, May yeah. '91, uh, God gave rock and roll to you sessions. Uh, video wise there's dvds in there if they were to do that uh, the live shows again you're talking one um revenge era shows definitely two cds you know you've got the uncut K kiss confidential extreme close-up as well yeah. for that matter could be thrown in because that's in the 92 to 93 era and then you've got the writing demos look at what's on gene's box and what isn't yeah um, on a lot of good part stuff. of me and then some of the unreleased stuff that has not yet made it so even if you remine stuff that's been in, released on other kind of box sets and bring it in you've got an awful lot of material let alone what paul may have in his storage or what universal didn't have go up in smoke and if universal was able to blow my mind with a crystal clear copy of um you know none of your business and mm -hmm. and perfect quality magna sound um who knows what they may have or wherever they got those from if it wasn't you know, coming from universal themselves so you know it, it's not just a sop for Va uh for vonnie for lonnie um <laughs> it it is 
you know, that I think it makes the most sense in terms of the breadth of material that could be yeah. all compiled into a very, very worthy product and also give a, a, a kick-ass designer like Tom German uh, free reign to take that destroyer concept and some of the bonus items. I mean, what tour book, if anyone wanted shrunk down to a manageable size, Revenge <laughs> is the perfect candidate because that thing is unholy. No pun intended. It's big. Um, yeah, it's bigly. I got it, it right here. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I, I, I get excited thinking about it, even though I'm not a yeah. massive fan of that album. I am a massive fan of the music and what else could be in there that I'm not even, you know, aware of. I, didn't Bruce do a Korg demo session around that time as well? Um, you know, and then you got uh, obviously the J Japan 95 comes into oh, Revenge yeah. Era. So, yeah, all bets are off. Everything is possible. Santiago, 94. Oh, that's yeah. Revenge Era. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that could thing be pretty cool. could be absolutely yeah. amazing. That'd be a good one. And very expensive, obviously. <laughs> all right let's end on a quick thought and this okay. comes this last one comes out of uh something i was doing uh, in preparation for the the next aerosmith book um i just happened to stumble across this and it was a, a ludicrous uh thing about kiss and uh it was a pastor in 1990 of all things and this guy was a drummer in a band in connecticut who uh found religion and then started deciding that uh you played beatles records back backwards they were telling you to sniff glue um but he said that gene's tongue thing <laughs> that i can't do um was not actually satanic but it was a secret message of death to your soul <laughs> and <laughs> That was new to me. Wow. I've never heard that one. We've heard the tongue grafted on, the cow's tongue grafted yeah. on, mm -hmm. and and the uh, you know some of the other silly stories. That is the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard about Kiss. Ken, you've been around the block a few times. What's the most ludicrous thing you ever heard about Kiss? Well, yeah, you mentioned the, of course, the the grafting and <laughs> this other new one. Um, I think the one was uh, the basic, the one that always seems to pop up is about, you know, uh, knights in Satan's service, that yeah. one, you know. Um, it's like uh, they they always wanted to think that they they were some devil worshippers of some sort, um, which is, you know, whatever, people making it up. Um, though I do remember... And actually, when I went to the Creatures shows, um, maybe it was Creatures and that were the one after a year after um, or so. Um, and they had people standing outside the, the venue. I, I, I remember the Cow Palace, uh, for instance, on one. And they're, they're standing out there and they want to hand you these books, you know, and stuff. And uh, it's just, you, you ignore them, but it's like, man, these people really believe that this is devil music that we're listening to. Um, there's a lot other bands, many other bands that are a lot worse to, to I would say, to listen to than, than Kiss. Kiss is pretty fluff compared to some other bands out there. So anyway, that was that was the big one. It was the night in Satan's Satan service, you know. Mark, other than we hear and we obey, what's the most ludicrous thing about Kiss you've ever heard? Well, I mean, back when I was really, really young, uh, living in the apartment buildings and, you know, with the older sister there hanging out, uh, I, I heard a lot of really ridiculous things, too. Like, I mean, I know there was a guy in the building that was convinced that Gene had that whole thing with his tongue, that it was a cow's tongue that was put into his <laughs> mouth and replaced. Like, there were people that believed that, like, you wouldn't believe. And then there was, there was some guy in our building, too, who was convinced that the whole blood spitting thing was actually a real thing that Gene would, would actually bite his tongue and oh, cause himself ouch. to bleed. And we were like, we kept trying to tell him that's impossible, dude. If he did that, the, first of, of all, the he week. would get so infected. He would be infected by, by in a week's time, uh. you know? But, but if you kept biting it and doing that, it, it, it was always kind of ridiculous stuff like that because as I found as I got older, you know, 
the focus on Kiss then was more about the music then. I found that the rumor end of stuff and the sort of ridiculous stuff was always something that I heard or a lot of people hear when they're a lot younger because you can, you know, you can kind of fool your young siblings so that, you know, I, I think that was part of the fun, you know, like when you're older, you can kind of convince your little brother, hey, you see this guy, he's got a cow's tongue, you know, and, and they're, they're like, wow, really? You know, they don't believe it, you know, because they're so young, they don't know, right? So, but those are the two things that I, I heard as well. I mean, the, the Knights and Satan service things I heard kind of later, and that was just kind of a thing that I kind of rolled my eyes with because it was always associated, at least over here, with some sort of Bible guy who would come on and say, Kiss should be banned from playing in our neighborhoods. They are a bad influence on our children, you know? Like So they always kind of tied the Knights and Satan service with that, so. Okay, yeah, look what happened to us. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> what have you heard, Daniel? That is the most ludicrous. Well, I have to agree with the other guys. You know, I always marvel at the uh, priests talking <laughs> about Kiss being bad, and then they go and do the stuff they do. Well, whatever. Uh, but personally, I mean, if you think about what people have said to you in person. I always remember something hap that happened to me way back in, I think, like fifth grade. I was 10, 11 years old. I had just discovered Animalize and Asylum. And, of course, I was drawing kissed makeup all over my notebooks and stuff when I was supposed to do other stuff. So I guess my teacher was a bit irritated, and he was kind of a... How do you say it in English? He, he was a religious guy, my teacher. Bible thumper? Uh, yes, something like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he, I, you know, I drew Kiss with the, flat, you know, the S's and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I guess he got kind of tired of it. And this was a grown man, and he walked up to me and he pointed at my... You know, drawings. I still draw a lot of Kiss guys. I always, I, I, when I don't have anything to do, I start drawing. You know, Gene, his makeup. Mm -hmm. I think it's so fun to draw, still yeah. to this day. But back then, I draw, I drew it, and uh, this teacher came to me. I liked him, but he was, you know, like a religious kind of not case at times, mm -hmm. and and he just pointed at what I had drawn. You know what Kiss stands for? <laughs> uh, no. Puss, as it's as you say in Swedish, you know, a kiss. Puss, no, 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 no. It's night in Satan's service, and then he just walked off. Mm -hmm. And I thought, kind of cool. Kind of sounds kind of cool. So it didn't have the effect he wanted, but uh, that's my, you know, the memory, I, uh, the biggest memory I have from from you know crazy stuff being said to me. You know, this teacher, I looked up to him. He was a great teacher, but he was kind of you know, cuckoo. Uh, religious cuckoo. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he didn't understand that it was just music. He, he tried to, you know, downplay it some, some way. So so that's my biggest memory when I was kind of baffled, but at the same time, you know, it sounds kind of cool. So <laughs> he didn't get me off the kiss wagon, so to speak. Yeah, it's always kind of funny to think that uh, music has had a lot of positive influences on people's lives in many ways and those people who use gene and paul as role models for you know anti-drugging or drinking you know for what they need in their lives not necessarily the negative things that may be attached to those guys but uh it's, it's very weird what everyone takes out of the message you know, i was reading some newspaper stuff about early 90s you know in some uh, american cities trying to ban rock concerts but mm. they were okay with johnny cash well that's a that's a you know he was a druggie and oh, yeah. a cheater. Well, yeah, you know, that's just like pure hypocrisy. You know, it, it's Hypocr not about those values or the things that profess to be values. It's about control. And yes. that's often mm -hmm. what comes into the mix and everything. So I don't know if this is, was our last show for the year. It's a long one. Oh, no. We don't usually do 90 minutes. In what case... Happened? In case it is, we and again, in, in case we <laughs> don't get together next week, which I hope we do, um, yeah. 
I do want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, joyous Kwanzaa, or Happy Hanukkah mm -hmm. belatedly as well, or a festive <laughs> Festus, or whatever happy you celebrate, festive. or just good morning if you're doing none of the above. <laughs> uh, you, you know, we do appreciate the support that you've given us throughout 2021. And yes. we hope you'll join us again in 2022. We look forward to shaking things up and doing new topics. And Daniel brought us into the land of Kiss Quizzes in 2021, and they've been great yeah. fun. So who knows what we will do next year. Uh, we certainly hope that you'll stick around and find out. And if we see you next week, eh, consider it a bonus. It's free. You know, yes. <laughs> now, now that you've got the bonus miles, the occasional free episode doesn't do any harm. So for now, from Daniel, Ken, Lonnie, Andrew, Andy, Mark, everyone who's a part of the show, uh, thanks for joining us and we'll see you again soon. See ya. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.